So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us tonight for Abstract Art with Carla. Uh, this is part of the Border Crossings Project from the Art Gallery of Mississauga. We'd like to start by acknowledging the land on which we gather here, which is the region of Peel operates. It is part of the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. For thousands of years, Indigenous people inhabited these, this area and cared for this land. In particular, we acknowledge the territory of the Anishinaabe, Huron-Wenda, Haudenosaunee, and Ojibwe Chippewa people, the land that is home to the Metis, and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, who are direct descendants of the Mississaugas of the Credit. We are grateful for the opportunity to work on this land, and by doing so, give our respect to its first inhabitants. We continue to respect this land as we move forward with today's workshop. Now, borders are challenges faced physically, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. They can both connect and divide, shared by the art of storytelling. Recognizing and sharing these border crossings allows us to understand ourselves and others differently. Instead of, instead of groups of people separated by arbitrary distinctions, we are all individuals who experience pivotal moments of change that shape the contours of the narratives of our lives. So come and explore these stories. The Border Crossings Project is generously funded by the Ontario Trillium Foundation through the GROW Grant, the Ontario Arts Council, as well as the City of Mississauga's Cultural Division. So today we are joined by Carla, who is going to share with us abstract art. So I'm going to spotlight Carla and you can take it away. Hello everybody and I'm so grateful to be here today and sharing this time with you in this COVID times where we're trying to keep it uh, exciting online and my name is Carla. I'm original from Venezuela but have been in Canada for a very long time and uh, enjoying all the culture that happens here. I see people from everywhere. So thank you for joining. So exciting. Um, so today I will be sharing my uh, screen because I want to show you what we're gonna work on. Um, it's going to be a very nice um, abstract uh, landscape. Abstract, let me see. Um, all right, so it's a little crooked. Um, so today we're gonna be working on a beautiful, um, a very easy and fun to make uh, landscape abstract. Oh, by the way, if you have any questions, you can type them out and Christine will uh, um, forward them to me. So this is a, a very beautiful, simple abstract. We're going to, I'm going to explain a little bit about how we're gonna proceed with it. And uh, I do repeat sometimes as people join us, um, later on. So we have, um, it's going to be uh, splitting into two. We're going to start at the top uh, where we're going to be working with whites and blues. And then we're going to go to the bottom where we're going to be wor working with warmer colors, which are red and yellow. And the very last touch, we will be working on the center horizon part. If uh, you like different uh, colors, it is totally okay that you use whatever palette you love um that's fine if you don't like these tones you can change it to whatever you have at home it doesn't have to be exactly like this this is such a uh, fun and easy project um so i'm gonna um get my i'm gonna show you something so yes you have a question i think i heard somebody um so i'm gonna show you what happens when you use different tones so um this is one and this is completely different colors and longer strokes. So I'm going to be directing, uh, but everybody has a different hand movement and we have different wrists and history in our body. So it may not be, it will always be different and unique. Everybody will be different. Um, and we would love to see, of course, at the end what happens. So I'm going to get my blank canvas and we're going to start. And I hope everybody enjoys this. And please do ask any question uh, that you need to throughout the workshop. Nancy, you have your hand up. Do you have a question for us? I think that's my mom from Venezuela, and I think she's, oh, okay. just, she's just saying hello. <laughs> uh, so um, this is um, my canvas. Um, I'm going to um, explain what we're going to do. We're going to start. I'm going to use kind of a medium 
medium brush that I have. And I'm waiting for everybody to grab their brush. Um, with the brush, you can create different strokes, of course, by using it sideways or on the white side. So that's what I'm going to do. And the first part is simple. All I'm going to start in both parts is going to be using just white at the beginning to add uh, some moisture to the canvas because sometimes they're too dry um, to work on straight up with color. So I'm just gonna um, take the white and start with that now. Because there is a horizon, I'm going to think or trace an imaginary line that's going to be going across the center. I can either do it with the white itself, or I can do it in just in my brain. But the first step, we're just going to grab the white, and we're going to add just some plain white. So we have some uh, medium at the bottom before we start painting. So what I'm going to do is just mark the center uh, with my white more or less in the center, it could be, so I'm just marking it. I know it's kind of white, but I'm going to just add some blobs of white. It doesn't have to be the full thing. So you can go ahead and put some white on the top part of your canvas. Um, so like a, for those who just joined, we're just splitting the canvas into two. We're just adding some white. If you want it to be very texture-like, add more. And if you like uh, smooth, you can add a little less. So I'm just adding just plain white on my canvas at the top. And how we, um, Christine, how are we gonna do with the, how to know when everybody's ready? Just thumbs up, I guess, like last time. So we're just adding white to the top. Just like that. And that's so I can run my colors uh, easier. I'm gonna put it down. So I just added white to that part. And now we're gonna start, I'm gonna start explaining a little bit. So for the sky part, um, I'm going to be using blue, but if you like uh, purple, any other color is fine. That's gonna be my sky color is going to be blue. So I'm going to have my white that I already used. Then I'm going to have a little blob of white with a little bit of blue. And I have another one, a twinsy here, because I want to mix darker and lighter. But right now, we have put some white paint. And I'm going to just dab my brush a tiny bit into that blue and back into the white. And the motion of my wrist is going to be uh, semicircular because I want to create some uh, motion um, in this uh, top part. So I'm just going to be doing semicircular, almost like uh, if you were stirring something into a pan. I'm not adding too much color to this. I'm going to lift it up a bit so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm just, Carla, yes. Is there a reason why you use white paint instead of gesso on the bottom? Um, because this canvas already has gesso. I don't, I don't put gesso. If you want to add a texture to your painting, you can do gesso prior and let it dry and then you can paint on top. By all means, that's not a problem at all. I am just using white paint because I already gesso, my canvas already has gesso in it. But if you were painting with a raw canvas or if you wanted to add more texture, you could totally uh, use some gesso, no problem. So I'm just you doing my semicircular and I'm just going to go until the middle of the canvas. Take your time. I'm doing it quick because I'm showing you. And if you have any questions, please uh, forward. I'm going to put it down again. So my motion again, it's been a kind of uh, semicircular, like I'm stirring a stir fry here. And I may add a little bit more white. I will be revisiting the top section once we do the bottom um, because that way it's going to be connecting in some way with the color. Um, for this part, I am just adding uh, the white and the blue. And then I'm gonna probably pick into the blue a bit more, make it a tad darker and add some more strokes around. Because it is an abstract, it doesn't have to look like 
exactly like clouds. It could just be the movement of the color that we're enjoying here. So we can add some uh, dabs of darker. I like to think of the canvas um, usually as a pond and then all my colors and my motion will take me throughout the canvas. So we're just starting and uh, we don't need to think about that yet, but it's something to keep in mind. So I'm gonna add a little more white. If you like really texture, you can use a lot of paint and if you like less, just use less. So. Add that. Different people have different strokes. So um, we're just doing, um, I'm just doing this semicircular. I'm gonna show you a bit closer if I can. So I have a little bit of texture going on, not too much. And the reason why I'm doing these strokes in semicircular is because I'm planning to change the stroke at the bottom. So that way there's a little bit of movement. Um, I think I'm gonna go a little bit lower here. So I think I'm going to stop mine, but you can continue with yours until you are satisfied with the, the tones that you have. Um, I like mine to be pretty light. Um, I will be adding, like I said, other colors from the bottom section up again. Do we have any questions? That's so I did exactly the same as last time. I put too much paint on the first time. So. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So I've done it again with a little bit. So it's near yours, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you're going to have a collection. That's awesome. You can put them together. Yes, yes it's just different. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you totally can pick up. Some people love. Um, you can also layer, like if you do this kind of painting, paint one layer one day, wait, do another one the next day, you're going to get a pretty good buildup. Um, and I wanted to talk a bit about being a little bit eco-friendly with the brush cleaning. Um, usually we used to put the brush in the water and then um, dump that water into the drain. Um, we will have to wash our brushes also, but um, I have a, a rag and that I've had forever. It's kind of ugly, but I usually wipe my brush with it before I put it into the water. Um, you don't have to do this now, but I'm just showing you. And then once it's pretty clean, I, I dip it into the water a little bit and then I, I wipe it again. And that way, oops. <laughs> Just pulled it hard. And that way I'm not putting that much acrylic into the drain. Uh, it's all in my nasty clothes. <laughs> I love it because it's going to be there until it's too dry to use. <laughs> the cloth tells a story. Yes. And you know what? The cloth at the end, you can cut it and put it into a collage. So then you don't have to even trash it. <laughs> So what you do is after, whenever you guys are almost there, you can signal to, to us that you are ready to continue. Got two people are good to go. All oh, right. <laughs> I'm so excited that there, I see people from uh, outside of our area, which mm -hmm. is really cool. It's nice to meet together here and do something fun together. All right, I think we're good to go. Yes, all right. So we're gonna come back to this. Um, right now, I'm going to work at the bottom, on the bottom of the painting. Um, so I, I myself, I'm gonna uh, bring back this to show you quickly. So we did the top, we just did the blue. We're gonna be adding those tones after. Don't worry about the center now. We're gonna be working on the bottom section. And then the last part is we're gonna do the center. Um, so in this part, myself, I use uh, uh, red and yellow. 
and then I added some white as well. So I will be showing you, and as you can see, we have the circular uh, movement at the top, but here I'm going up and down and I will show you uh, how I'm going to do that. Um, so I'm going to add, because I like these colors, but you can be so welcome to use colors that you love. That's what it's all about too. All right, I'm gonna get some red as well. So I have the red and the yellow, and I always love to put just as much as I think I need to start. You can always add more paint to the palette, but it is uh, sad when you have too much paint and then you have to dispose it. Um, so I'm going to use those stones for the bottom, which I'm going to show you how. So I did wipe my brush. Um, I am gonna keep the same brush just for fun, but you can change the size of the brush as well if you want to. I'm going to be dipping uh, my brush into uh, the yellow and a little bit of the red and a little bit of the white. So I'm just dipping it. I'm not, I'm not mixing in this, uh, in this painting um, as much. So I'm just letting the natural thing happen. So the stroke here is going to be going up and down. So like that. So we're going kind of a airplane that is landing and taking off. So you're landing and taking off. And you don't have to blend it. It's nice when you're just going and filling in the gaps as if you're playing Tetris. So it's the piece is falling and you're just finding a spot for it. Um, and I'm just mixing my, my colors and going into the empty spot for now. I'm going into my empties and going in there, like filling up a puzzle. I have a piece of something here. Get out. And so I'm going with my yellow, my red, and a tad of white for now. I'm going to revisit probably with some white because I did make it kind of dark. So I'm filling in my spaces. And take your time. Like I said, I'm going like Speedy Gonzalez here. So <laughs> I can take questions if you have any. So I have the bottom flowing down. Uh, with my two colors, I'm going to revisit with white because I, for my taste, is a little bit dark. So I'm going in between with the white. The great thing about acrylics is that you can always revisit, or if you don't like something, you can easily cover it up with just plain white. And it's interesting, even if I'm the same human, it's not gonna look the same as my last one or the one before, because we always have a different day. We always wake up differently. And it's very cool that paintings will never look exactly the same, unless you print them, of course. <laughs> So are you touching where you were with the white and the blue near the top or are you leaving a, a small gap between? I'm gonna show you. That's a great question. Um, so I have a minimal, like I have a little bit of a, a line there, but um, empty, like white. But if you did touch, it's fine. It's okay. You can, uh, we can revisit the middle. It's not a problem because we will be working with darker colors there. So it will be fine. Um, so right now I do have a little line there, a little space between, but if you went up and down, that, that's fine. We can cover it up. The other thing with art, which is beautiful, is that, you know, we're all unique. So therefore our paintings are going to be expressing our own, our own way of seeing things. So. And the, the nice thing about abstract too is that, you know, it is uh, color 
and movement and and some of them you can do like this, which is hor uh, horizon, horizontal. You can create in Z, in a Z shape or Z or a C form. Um, you can have them being like just uh, kind of geometrical forms or like this one. It, it could be anything at the bottom, really a field, or it could be water, or it could be people walking towards something. It, it could be anything, which is the great thing about acrylic, I mean, abstracts, because it's not, really something that's describing an exact uh, moment or situation. It could be, you could even hang it sideways, you know, it doesn't have to be um, anything in particular, but it does, uh, it is nice in the sense of composition, color and light, uh, it's pretty fun. Feel free also to, like when you stop, take a minute, take a look and see how it's going. Um, right now it's two opposites. And this one's going this way and that one up and down. So it's, uh, I like that kind of uh, change between the top and the bottom. Another thing you can do, like other ideas, not doing this one, but this painting a whole uh, canvas. And then you can actually add um, some tape once it's dry and paint over again, then add some, uh, whatever elements you want to add to it with line, which is a whole new thing, but so much fun with uh, actually with acrylics and abstract. I, I did oils most of my life. So for me to go into acrylics, I was like, I didn't want to. And then when I try them and how easy it is to go over things or change things, I like that part of it. I do like the smoothness and uh, the richness of color of the oil as well, but acrylics are good. For, yes. There's a question. How do you hold your brush? Are you holding it sideways or okay. straight? So for me, um, I hold it like this. Um, I'm using it, like I said, flat is coming this way. But if I want to add some other details, I can flip it and use it sideways like this um, to make like these small lines that I want to do walking across. Um, but I'm mostly using it like this and I hold it almost like a almost like a like a pencil when I'm coloring but if I'm doing detail work I'm going to the front to have more control and to have these nice uh, waves um, I'm holding it in the middle and if I want to be super super loose then I go at the very end and then the it's it's a wider stroke but I'm right now right like in the middle so. If the, your wrist gets tired, you can do a little bit of wrist uh, motion or you can pull back your hand a bit and then forward and that releases. Sometimes that gets a little tired. Um, let me see. You could stay all day in one painting probably <laughs> on a lazy Sunday. <laughs> Just uh, add things to it, go have a tea, come back and add some more. For those people who like uh, metallic, you can always get some metallic paint and add some dabs of that too. I have a personal question. Yes. Have you, so you mentioned that, you know, you can, build layers and you can come back yes what is the longest you've taken to put layers on on a painting that you've done uh one is funny when I went to art school um uh there was models and we painted a model in oils and she had she, no, had no she was naked so years after I decided to dress her and then I put some outfit on her and then I went back to it and I put her on a field because I wanted her to be in a happy place. So I, it went from a naked model to a dress model to a model in a, in a field. So that took me actually a couple years to go back into it and see what I really wanted to do with it. There's no time uh, limit uh, to going back to a painting and having some fun again, revisiting. A lot of my canvases I reuse, like if I'm 
teaching or something, I use this texture and I paint on top. That's another great use for canvases or paintings that you do not like. Just paint over them with uh, gesso or white acrylic and, uh, and then paint over. And then you have this nice texture happening as well. If you do have access to very large canvases, it's super fun to work with super large brushes the same way, just creating movement and playing with color. Um, you can think of a landscape or, or a shape and uh, just go with that flow in your head, or you can trace it before, but it's super nice to work uh, large scale. Can the horizon on this have a slight curve? Of course. It can, it could be uh, almost kind of a mountain there if you want, uh, or a, a sea with a hit by the wind that's coming up and down, for sure. And Leticia had a comment that she's so used to realistic kind of painting that it's, she's having a lot of fun loosening up. And there's still, there's really no wrong with this kind of painting, like it's, it's really, uh, your own like abstract. So yes, it's, it's fun. It's so fun to let loose. And I had a friend who painted black and white only and I always ask her what? And she had so much fun just with the texture of the paint and the movement that she never went into color. Um, she stayed in black and white. I think she added a dab of red at once, but that's it. Um, because she thought color was distracting. She wanted to put more texture. So yeah, you can have fun. Any paint you have left that you don't like, you just use it and you can paint over with chunky and an ab uh, abstract and then paint over it with other colors. Uh, it's uh, limitless. So it's raining here and I wonder if it's raining in the States and in Venezuela <laughs> or if it's the same, the same as here or different. Oh, we have a little bit of rain in San Diego here. Oh, nice. Oh my God. I love what you have behind you. I don't know. It's like a... a Thank um, you. Yeah. Yep, um, from Morocco. Wow. It looks beautiful. Yeah. Thanks. Nice. So we'll wait for people to... Um, to say thumbs up and um, we're gonna, um, no rush, I'm just going to explain. Um, Robert, now, a question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, it seems like you have a light touch. Is that how you avoid blending the colors? Sorry, I, can you repeat? So it seems like you have a light touch when you're painting versus being very strong. Is that how you avoid blending the colors by being light? Nope, it's just my style. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with that. It's just I, and this comes back from school too. It's kind of a, when I went to school here in Toronto, um, my parents had left, I was only 18 and I ran out of paint and I had only a tube of uh, blue and some white. And I used to like be very light with my paint so it wouldn't finish, so I could finish my course. <laughs> So I stayed with that in my brain that I use little paint, but you can totally use more. Like you can't see, you, if I bend it, you can see that I have, I do have texture. Um, the light color, it's because I, I like this being pastel, but like I showed the one before, um, you could totally go uh, darker like that. So that's pretty dark. That's more of a heartbeat. Um, um, it's up to you, yeah. I like light colors at the moment. Who knows what will happen next? So for those who I see some people joined us now, I uh, just wanna go quick overview. 
So uh, this is the sample that we had to work with. And uh, we started putting white and then white and blue on top in semicircular motion. And then we moved on to the bottom, adding uh, two different tones, yellow and red, and adding some white in the middle. And we're meeting at the center. Um, And now what's gonna happen uh, whenever you guys are ready, no rush, we have time. I love it that we're having time. <laughs> we have good time today. Um, we're gonna actually make the top and the bottom talk or communicate by adding a little bit of uh, the tones from the bottom, very lightly to the top. Or if you love to go all the way dark, that's fine. Um, then again, it's a personal choice. So I like the painting, like I said, to you can go up and down with your eye and it just doesn't stop at an area. So there is some elements of color from the bottom to the top. Um, so I will do that in a few minutes when we are ready. So if you guys are good to go, you can just write in the comments, ready or done. And then that way, Carla will know to continue. Yeah. No rush, though. We have good timing today. I love it. <laughs> yes. All right, we're getting a bunch of dones and readies. All righty then. So I'm going to take uh, the same brush. I didn't clean it because I'm going to uh, take some of that mix that I have at the bottom. And I'm just going to add some, uh, go right and dive into the top with the same motion that I had before. I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, the tone that I have at the bottom at the, at the top. So I'm adding it so they can communicate a bit uh, via color, sending a message. So I'm just adding, like I said, it's a personal. If you want to go dark, that's totally fine. I'm going to add a little bit more of yellow and mixing a little bit of kind of a a light orangey yellow here. And I'm gonna go back in. So can you see like now it's kind of going like that before just because it was all cold, uh, cool colors and then warm, it wasn't really talking too much. So I'm gonna add some kind of, uh, I think also I have a super bright light here. I should make it a little dimmer <laughs> so you can see more of the color. Um, so yeah. Well, my my colors are coming out very dark. You you've got those very very light colors in there, mm -hmm. Carla. Um, yeah. Are you using a lot of water with your? No water. I'm just using the acrylic paint. And what happens is I'm using a white. I'm using I had mixed a little bit of white with the yellow and the red. So I have uh -huh. kind of a salmon color happening here. But I also added some just kind of plain um, plain um, yellow and white as well coming through. Um, but like I said, totally fine if it's dark, it's beautiful too. It's uh, completely up to you. But if you want to mix, you can mix with, uh, and try to dim this a bit. Um, okay, yeah, that, that lightens it up. If I can turn this light sideways, so you can see more color. Can you see more color now? I put this light is super bright that I have here, so. Yeah. Yeah, color is totally personal. Um, you can do this painting with pure red and and uh, whatever color, purple, whatever you like. Um, just and because I have so many, uh, so much color left, I may. I mean, we still have to do one more part, but I may just use some pure. Um, um, yellow or red and then go and have some fun just doing uh, turning my brush and making it uh, on the long side and just making some lines uh, on the bottom again or add some more at the top but um,
So I have a question, two yes. questions actually. Yes. Uh, the first question is, how are the colors so blended in the first example that you shared? <clears throat> in this one? Um, so I have two, I'm gonna show you. So this one, I didn't blend too much. I was choppy like today. And this one, um, I was working at night and I thought it was dark, but it was pretty light. So I, they're not really blended. They're just very lightly placed on. I can show you closer like that. So I just made pretty light colors on it. And like I said at the beginning, every painting is going to look different. Um, so if you can see that from that to today, um, it's different tops, right? They still the same uh, colors, but different, uh, different, different strokes and a little bit of lighter or darker. So probably going to put the three side to side after. And then one other question is, do you use medium? Um, I use medium um, probably in a larger canvas. I like to use medium to, to uh, make my, uh, my acrylic more fluid. Uh, or I use, I let it dry and, and then I use medium on top um, as a coat, like um, as a varnish almost. Uh, but I do use medium sometimes. So I like to use the gloss um, depending on what I'm painting or the matte one. If I'm doing more of a geometrical, I like to do a matte for some reason. You can also have um, interesting combination. If you, if you do a painting and you take parts of it and put some of the gloss and then matte on some areas, you have a different uh, feel on the whole painting as well. Yeah, I do use medium sometimes, not today, but I do. And um, last time we were talking also about moods, like, um, <laughs> so this, uh, today I'm pretty calm. <laughs> I had a tea before this uh, and my colors tend to be lighter. And then this one, um, I wasn't, I had kind of a rowdy day and uh, I was just letting a lot of emotion out. And this is why this came out pretty dark because I was just going up and down in strokes and like um, letting all my feelings out, which is a really good thing for these times um, in COVID where we feel bottle or whatever feelings, uh, happy, sad, or angry, or frustrated. And that can all come out in these small canvases and create really cool art just with your mood. So yeah, I'm pretty chill today. <laughs> and for those of us that are fairly new to this, what yes. is medium? So the medium is um, actually, um, it, it, it dries clear. It's almost like if you take the pigment out of the out of the acrylic and medium is just a clear, it's almost glue-like, right? It's uh, the base of the acrylic. So that medium sometimes, I don't know if you've seen the pouring paintings that people are going crazy about. So you put medium, which is kind of a clear and then you layer your acrylic and pour it over and it, it, it creates this beautiful um, uh, movement and color. And so the medium is, what the base of this would be without the pigment. So it's just uh, just plain, um, the plain um, material they use for mixing. So if you buy a medium, a uh, bottle of medium, you can buy, like I said, a matte one, or you can buy a glossy or super glossy, and it will change the feel of your painting as well. And the medium, like you can use it to stretch your paint, you can do glaze. So for example, if you have this color, uh, of blue and you mix medium with just a little bit of um, of blue, you can create this kind of transparency um, paint um, that you can do like water with, or, you know, it depends that uh, what you can do, but uh, there's also like um, different kinds. So it's up to you. You should buy like small uh, bottles of medium to try it. I, I like the the matte for some things and the glossy, but there's lots of, uh, there's texture medium, which is like, thicker and then you can use it to put under your painting before let it dry and paint over um something fun to do which is not part of the medium but something i did as an exploration and it was fantastic was i took a canvas and i used a glue gun and i made um, a shape at the bottom let it dry and then i painted with medium on top and then i painted on top and it was really fun um to do that um 
because it was texturized. So yeah, medium can be uh, applied on top or mixed to make your, uh, it's almost like instead of water because you don't want to use too much water with, uh, with your acrylic. I don't really use any water at all. I just uh, clean it with my cloth and use it again, just like that. So when I move this, it becomes really light. And if I move it away, it's a little too dark, but that's okay. So once we have that uh, painting talking, um, we're going to, now, like I said, it's up to you if you want to, I'm going to be switching brushes now because I want to, you can either keep it and use it sideways uh, or you can, it'll be the same feel. I'm going to use a little uh, a smaller brush to make the, the horizon part or the center of the landscape, abstract landscape. And I'm going to be using some of the paint I have here already. I'm going to make some green. So I'm gonna add blue and yellow. I think I have some yellow that is not full of red here. So I'm gonna mix that to create a green. And my blue is, uh, this one is cerulean blue. So that's another interesting thing. Um, depending on what blue, uh, some blues have more red, some blues don't. And depending what kind of blue you buy, it will mix differently. So it's really funny um, if you wanna buy the basic colors or if you wanna, this one is uh, cerulean, it's really nice uh, blue, um, but there's different blues, different greens. So. I'm mixing my paint here to start the center. And I may use a little bit of um, the red to create uh, another tone here, maybe almost purple like. Let's see what happens in the middle today. So I'm gonna show you the original uh, or the other ones. And we'll wait a bit to see when everybody's ready. Maybe. Do you prefer, um, do you have a preferred acrylic paint brand and what basic colors do you recommend for people who are starting out? Um, so you can just uh, get the primary, uh, you know, the ca uh, cadmium yellow and uh, the cadmium red. And then I love this blue, it's called Sir William blue. But like I said, you can, uh, you can pick a darker one depending. I, I like how this one mixes. So for this uh, particular course, but for sure cadmium yellow and cadmium red, um, I could write it on the on the chat as well. And then just white and, and black, um, titanium white, because there is tons of whites too. So sometimes if you buy a white that has a tone of yellow, it's gonna change your whole mix as well. So um, let me write it on the on the chat too. Mm -hmm. Chat. I was trying to see how you did I exit? No. Oh, I'm kind of new at this. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I think I ex exit by mistake there. I lost my chat box. Let me see where it is. Oh, I have to. Um, you know what? I'll type it when we go back to the other camera because I can't type it on this one. But basically, cad cadmium. Yellow? Yeah, so cadmium red, so C-A-D-M-I-U-M. Yep. And cadmium red. And a gray blue, it's the spell P-H-T-H-A-L-O, phalo blue. And it's beautiful to mix. Those are the, the basic ones that you can create lots of color with. And those will not turn your mix into an awkward mix. 
Um, like for example, in this case, I use um, uh, the blue that I'm using is cerulean and it did not make the green dark. It made it into almost a teal. So that means the mix in my blue is a little bit uh, too yellow. Um, but um, yeah, and then you just need the titanium white and then just black, plain black. And with that, you can, you can do anything, like any color. Um, yeah, that's very basic ones. And I love this brand. Uh, it's called Windsor and Newton. I'm sure you've heard about it. And, uh, but to start also, uh, I mean, if you're in Canada, I'm sure in the States too. I mean, for students, um, usually this one even works good simply acrylic. It's just uh, from Dollar and Roni. Um, so it's just, uh, the difference is that, um, like we were talking about the medium, the thickness, these are like pretty uh, thin, thinner. And then the more you spend on these acrylics, the a little bit of a thicker medium in them. Um, but these are good. Any any one is good to start, you know? And then you can build up. I wouldn't recommend to spend so much money in acrylics un until you get to be in love with them. Then, then buy really expensive ones when you know you're gonna work a lot with them. Otherwise, you know, after a, a little, a few months, some of them dry up. This is why I like the tube because it closes and it's uh, it stays good. Like sometimes the the ones in the top they they dry a lot, so I stop buying those. Yeah. So um, I think people might be ready to continue, but let me know. No shot, no rush. So I'm gonna show you something. Uh, so in the middle. I particularly use, uh, I'm going to show you the motion with this without touching it. So I, I just do small landings like I was doing before. So touch and lift. Um, and I did <clears throat> a couple of dark colors, a little bit of a dark color. And then think of uh, the pulse of a heartbeat. That's how I started thinking of the center part. So heartbeat, when you do your blood pressure, or when you see movies, you see it was up and down. Um, and then you can revisit. So what I do is I'll show you slowly, but I just do one and then I mix another bit of white or yellow in it and go and do the second one. And then you get a feel of what you want to do with it. There's no right or wrong. Like I said, this could be a landscape. It could be a city, like it could be anything in the middle. So, um, and then I'll show you the other one, which was a little bit more um, dramatic. So I went sideways and up and down all the way also went all the way lower. So it's up to you um, how you want to do that part. But I'm going to do, when you let me know that you're OK to proceed, we will go ahead and, and go in the middle. We're good to go. Hmm. All right. So I'm going to think of a heartbeat. And I'm going to take this uh, green that I mix, which is pretty, again, it's a little light. But um, that's what happens when I have a different kind of blue. So I'm going to just um, think of a heartbeat and I'm going to do this stroke, but shorter. So I'm just going to have fun and have fun again. So I'm thinking of a heartbeat uh, and I'm landing and taking off and I'm not gonna do, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing well. Um, so I'm just making a shape almost heartbeat, like some are taller and some are shorter and can have, let me let loose a bit. <laughs> so I'm going down here. So, this one. so I'm just doing that. And then I'm going to revisit. Um, so like I said, this one could be total city, you know, because I left my stroke uh, very square at the top. Um, then I can mix it, the other one I had mixed with, uh, I can mix a little bit with uh, lighter color and revisit. So I'm going to mix it a bit with a lighter tone and I'm gonna revisit. And I'm gonna think, where would I wanna revisit? So I'm going to go in maybe in some spots and revisit with a lighter tone just because I, I like this tone, but um, if you have darker or lighter, that's fine. So as you can see, 
I'm going up and down like heartbeat, like a pulse. Um, in this case, um, I'm going to try to create a little darker one if I can. <laughs> Let me try. I'm going to add, I'm going to do an exploration here. I'm going to grab a little bit of the red actually and go into this. I'm going to add a darker, I want a darker tone just to do a little accent. And like I said, depending how you hold your brush, if you go this way, um, it will be creating these very similar strokes everywhere, or you can change it to the thin and then go back into it and create a little bit of a different feel. And every single time you paint something that you think is similar, you're gonna have a different experience because you've had a different day and it's going to turn out different. Um, so Christine, what other um, workshops are you having? On Saturday, we're actually doing a workshop about how to use your smartphone to do better photography. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. one. Because it's what you have on you all the time these days. You know, we all have our cell phone handy, no matter uh, where you come from or how old or whatever. You, everybody has their cell phone these days. Yeah. That's one thing I love for painting too, because I, I usually paint more, I, I do uh, surreal paintings. I love uh, surrealism and um, I take pictures um, when I'm outside and then I put make a collage in my computer and that's a good inspiration too for making some really cool art artwork, uh, collaging them before. So with this part, it's you know, totally up to you how much you wanna put into it. You can also let it dry and, and rework it um, if you want to add different tones to it. And like I said, if you ever get a, a hold of any uh, metallic paint, it's really fun to add mm -hmm. some metallic uh, dabs into it as well. I can't wait to see what yours look like. <laughs> I'm painting side with you, so it's really interesting. We add some yellow. So again, I always use a cloth to wipe my brush until that cloth dies, which this one is about 10 years. <laughs> so it's been with me for a while. I'm going to add some more of this. Uh, bit of yellow to it again. And it's good to pause and look and see if you wanna, um, you know, bring some more up or if you're happy with it. And a painting, I had a question last time, which I thought was pretty interesting. Uh, when do you know that you are finished? Well- Yeah, when do you stop? <laughs> <laughs> with this kind of painting, I could keep going, like an add and add and add. But um, I think in that sense, you're the one that's going to dictate when it's done. And I, I, what I do to myself <clears throat> when I can't stop is that I sign it and I step away. I already signed it, so it's ready. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I can totally go back to my paintings over and over. Um, artists or people that like painting and drawing, we're, uh, we like, we are very self-critical. You know, we are always like, oh, that's not good enough, or I could do better. What can I do here? And uh, yeah, so if you sign it, uh, it's done, it's done. And um, these paintings are great for very nice big signatures in the corner. Because <laughs> uh, there's always a space to add. And let me know if you have any more questions. I'm gonna 
So I could keep working on this uh, for a while. I could add white again. I could wait till it dries and add more um, darker tones. Um, but um, yeah, I'm gonna try and lift it a bit so you can see more of the colors. That's from the bottom. It's, it's hard, so it's pretty dark, but I'm gonna work. Probably get a yellow light last time. Next time. Um, I wanted to show you something. So in this one that I did with darker tones, I actually, days after I added a little bit of black and I want to add a little bit of uh, probably metallic color. And I actually added dark at the bottom again. Um, so this could be trees at the bottom or not, or just a rain on a window. It could be raining on a window and then that's what you see. Um, by the way, I heard that there was a little bit of a shake last night. Did anyone uh, feel that? last night about 3 30 in the morning in Canada no um, I didn't you know. really yes I heard it uh, in, in the radio and then my friend called me that she's in Montreal and she felt it pretty strong um so I was like oh I don't think it was in the big news anywhere um I don't know what it was then maybe it was Godzilla walking around <laughs> I know there was a uh, kind of a thunder, not a thunderstorm, but light, lightning, but I didn't see, I didn't feel the, the shake at all. Yeah, it's addictive. I could go on it <laughs> again and again and see what I want to change. So. So pretty, Carla. <laughs> Thank you. Beautiful. I can't wait to see yours. <laughs> <laughs> Not as pretty as yours, but. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I think I want to stop for now. <laughs> I can't believe there's people entering the room now. <laughs> Christine. If you have any questions, let me know. And for this, somebody asked last time, which was a good question, what do I do with this? So if I didn't, I, as you can see, there's not much paint left because I just put what I use. There's a little bit extra. Couple of things you can do um, if you don't want to put it in the into the drain is you can use a wipey. We all have wipes these days for the reasons that we do. So just wipe it as much as you can and then wash it. Um, and then um, that's it. Um, Carla, it might be because the times have changed. So you're you're an hour different to the UK at the minute. So we don't oh, have that. oh, wow. Imagine. It's coming. Yeah, it's been a right nightmare. Right. <laughs> they like being... That's right. Yeah. I Ours see. is on this Saturday, Sunday. Wow, so, I love your accent. We have so many accents in this channel. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, another thing you can try, and I see, think somebody's doing that right now, which I love, is um, use a knife palette and explore with this uh, exercise as well. 
um, which is almost like putting butter on a bread or a bagel and that's how you pick it up and put it down but so much to do with uh, arts it's it's too much i don't think this lifetime will be enough to explore how much we can create um when we feel free it's even better because there's no judgment uh, and it's just fun fun gathering so do you think we should get some photos of everybody oh my i would love that so i I want to ask if it's okay to stop sharing my screen. Then. Yes, I think so. Everybody, we've had a few people saying thank you, so I think they're all nearing the end. Stop share. All righty. Oh, yay! Okay, I get to see everybody. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do is, if everybody can hold their photo, their paintings up, I'm going to take us some photos. Love it. And if you if you're uncomfortable with with your face, um, because we will be sharing this on Instagram, just cover uh cover your face with the photo. Hey, hey, well, you're all pretty. Come on. Oh Show my gosh! Look at all of them. Wow! I love it. Look at those colors. I, I love it. I love it. Oh, that's great. And we have. Look, everybody's there turning there. there. We wait. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Look at that. Look, even a, a beautiful, they added some more lines to it. I don't know people say, Suzanne, you did lines going across. Wow. I, I can't even tell everybody their name, but you are amazing. Amazing. Beautiful. That's Carla. Yeah. My you favorite. are amazing. We love, we love your picture. It's so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I love all of yours. Fantastic. Wow. All yeah. right. I'm, I'm, I'm retiring, Christine. I'm letting these people take over now. <laughs> Amazing. And it's it's so interesting seeing some people have clouds. There's I can see hills. Yeah, look at that also. Shirley, I can I cannot say everybody's name, but it's beautiful. All of them are oh and different, eh? Look, D has like uh, more clouds, more trees at the bottom. Beautiful. I have a few screens to go through. Oh, beautiful. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. That was nice. Thank you for You're being so with beautiful. us. Oh. This, this is only my second acrylic in the whole world. My first was the one you taught me before. So, oh, oh, <laughs> brand wow. new, brand wow. new, number yes. two right here. Oh my God, now you have a collection. This is super fun, really oh. amazing. Fun way to paint, really. Oh, thank you, so much. thank you, Carla. It was thank great. You, thank you. Thanks, thank everybody. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was thank wonderful. You and if you do want to watch this again, it will be put on YouTube in a couple of days and we will email you out the link. Thank you so much, Carla, for yet another amazing workshop. Thank you. Hey, Carla, thank you. Carla, today is my birthday. birthday. So thank you for the party. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> awesome. Happy birthday. Feliz cumpleaños, see? Feliz cumpleaños. Oh, yes. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.